everybody. Welcome to the house of God. We just want to appreciate the choristers for the rendition, uh, starting with the orchestration. Praise ye the Father, and then followed by Jehovah Reni. May the Lord reign in our life today. Amen. We want to join voices together to sing and praise the Lord from CGS number 24. Praise the King of Glory. He is God alone. Amen. While we're doing that, we just want to appreciate all of you that are watching us over the internet and say, may the Lord bless you. This is the Apostolic Faith Church here in Fenham Road in Peckham. If you live close by, please just come in and worship with us. We're just starting. But if not so, just continue to watch on the internet. We, as we sing together this morning, we want to call on Sister Alos to lead us with the songs. We'll take all three verses after the introduction by the organ. <laughs> accept our praises. Amen. Our next song is still from the same hymn book, CGS 20. We are never, never weary of that grand old song. <laughs>
today. Yeah. Amen. Our song before prayer is Sieges 504. <laughs> us home. Living this world with its troubles, we thank you for the gospel. Amen. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, you were Lord yesterday. Yes. You are still Lord today. Yes. You will be still the Lord in, in the future. Yes. You saved yesterday, yes. you will save today. Yes. You will be saving yes. until you come. Yes. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Yes. You are present. Yes. Amen. You are at work today. Amen. Bless the se your servant. Amen. Speak through him. Amen. And direct your hearts. Help us, Lord, Amen. to be receptive Amen. to your word Amen. and to be obedient Amen. to your word. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Amen. Come and bless us, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray.
St. Matthew chapter 24. We read verses 36 to 39 and verse 44. Matthew chapter 24, starting from verse 36. Verse 36. But of that day, and are knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of no were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that no entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Verse 44. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. <laughs> from um, Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? May God bless us this morning. Amen. There's got to be a reason why we serve God. Then there's got to be a reason why we come near. Um, 
somebody asked me what I do on Sunday, and I told them, I, well, I spend the day at church. And they asked me, don't you have anything else, something better to do? And that, that felt a bit strange, you know. I actually took time to try and think what else I, I would be able to do on a Sunday. It's such a privilege to be in the house of God. Amen. The Bible tells us the preaching of this gospel is, is, is foolishness to them that perish. But to us it is the power of God. Amen. I don't know about you, but many times these days I'm often reminded of where God saved me from. A life, a really wretched life of sin. A defeated life, you know. A life where I didn't know peace in my heart. I didn't, I didn't have the kind of joy that I have now. Oh, what a privilege it is to be a child of God. Now the privilege to just whisper a prayer. And things happen immediately. It is a privilege. Yeah, of course. But the Bible says few are chosen. May we be counted among the chosen few. You know, so there were few chosen uh, at the time when Jesus walked on the face of this earth. And uh, uh, the Bible says he sat upon the Mount of Olives and the disciples came unto him privately. We can have a private moment with Jesus today. Um, you know, I just love this gospel. It, it is a no so kind of uh, gospel. You, we, we don't need to come to some really big men of God. Or uh, I mean, if you look at me, I'm not a big person at all. Uh, we don't have to go through a priest. You, you can go directly to Jesus yeah. and have a private conversation with him. He's listening to us today. Amen. You don't have to wait until the end of this message. You know what the Spirit of God is staring in your heart. And God is willing and able yes. to perform all he has promised to do in your life. Amen. And so they came knowing so and say to him, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. The title of our message today is Ready for Lift Off. Amen. Jesus' answer to them was, Take heed. Let no man deceive you. Jesus is coming again. The reason why I personally want God helping me do the best I can to be in the house of God on a Sunday. It's because I want to be ready. And I believe that's your desire too. Yes. We, 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 are, we are just pilgrims. Yes. We're on a pilgrimage. Yes. You know, we, we, we have a destination. And we have a destination to make. Yes. It's one thing to embark on a journey. But it is another to arrive at the destination, the final destination. May God help us. Amen. Now, before we embark on a journey, I like to believe that we all take time to prepare. Right now, uh, should the Lord tarry, uh, we're looking forward to camp meeting, aren't we? Well, I am. <laughs> I'm looking forward to camp meeting, away from the hustle and bustle of uh, you know, the city life we live in. Uh, when we just gather as children of God and feast at the table. Oh, what a glorious time it will be. Amen. So we are preparing for it. This is why lists are being put up. Because we are going to have to go there. I think they're making transport arrangements for us. Glory be to God. Amen. Before you embark on a journey, there's a preparation that needs to happen. In verse 44 of that chapter, Jesus says to his disciples, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man, is, the Son of Man cometh. Jesus told them of uh, uh, many things that would happen. 
before he comes back again. You know, as in the days of Noah, he says, uh, um, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that uh, were before the flood, they were eating and drinking. There's so much eating and drinking in London, uh, it, it really baffles my mind. If, if you walk out right now, I doubt if you'll spend 10 minutes before you come to a place where they, all they do is food or drink. If you go into central London, I'm not sure there's, there's no difference. Most, most places, really, there's a, they call it a watering hole in my working place, at my workplace. So I was wondering what it was. Where I come from, a watering hole is where we take the animals. You know, the cattle and the, and the goats uh, to drink. But uh, here they refer to pubs as thing, well, as something else. Um, it's the world we live in. But in the days of Noah, it was so. You know, and the message came that the end of things as we know them is coming. It didn't make sense to them. You know, it, it, it didn't register in their mind because they couldn't imagine what a flood was. They had never experienced anything like it before. Just didn't make sense. And here was Noah building something horribly big. Just didn't make sense. It just didn't make sense at the time. The Bible says, as the days of Noah were, so shall it be. So they ate and they drank, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. May God help us. Amen. Jesus has told us of things to come. In another instance, he says to his disciples, watch and pray, for you know not the hour. When we spoke about uh, care meeting, we, we know when we expect to be at care meeting. I believe some of us, when we think of the week ahead, we already know what's going to happen, what we expect to happen tomorrow morning, God helping us. But we do not know when the Son of Man is coming. We do not know when the Lord Jesus Christ is coming to take us home. May God help us. Amen. But Jesus makes a plea. He says, therefore, be ye also ready. For in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Now the Bible tells us uh, Jesus' second coming uh, is, is in two. There's two events that are going to, hap that, that are going to happen. Yes. This morning we want to focus on the first of those events. <laughs> so the next event in the prophetic calendar of God is about to happen. And that is the rapture. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians 15. Shall we read from verse uh, 51? Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. I get excited when I... I read this part of the Bible. The Bible says the trump shall sound. Yes, yes. And the dead shall be raised. And the earlier verse it says we, we shall not all sleep. Yeah. When the Bible refers to those that are asleep, it's referring to the saints that have gone on before us. They're not dead. They are asleep. Amen. They will be raised. Amen. Incorruptible. Amen. At the last trump. 
the trumpet of God shall sound. Amen. Well, only the, the ransomed of the Lord will hear the sound of the trumpet. For some, it will be business as usual. But for the children of God, oh, what a glorious moment that will be. Amen. The Bible says, uh, uh, and we shall be changed. Amen. Oh, that it will happen this morning. Amen. And the twinkling of an eye. Yes. That's how quickly it's going to be. Jesus didn't die on the cross so that we could be rich and drive big cars. No. He died for this moment. God wants us back. There's a reason why the blood was shed. To ransom you and me. To redeem us. To take away the curse upon us. To remove that sin in our lives. The Bible says for this purpose, Jesus was manifested. Amen. To destroy the works of the devil. Yes, God. May God help us. Amen. says it's a mystery. It's a mystery. It's very difficult to comprehend. It's, even scientists can't explain it. These are, th- these are principles of God's own kingdom. It's far beyond our understanding. He says our, his thoughts are not our thoughts. Neither are his ways our ways. We need to apply faith. For the word of God to have its way in our lives. He says I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. That's when it's going to happen. When the trumpet sounds and the twinkling of an eye. I was trying to look for statistics. I came across one. Uh, Thank God for Google. Uh, I'm not sure how correct it is, but according to Google, it takes 150th of a second for us to blink. A lot of us have just blinked. (laughs) The twinkling of an eye nanoseconds. In that moment, the saints are gone. That's why Jesus is saying, be ready. Because the takeoff will be so quick. The liftoff will be so quick. When I was a child, I was fascinated by uh, rocket launches. You know, when they start counting, 10, 9, 8, 7, Three, two, and then they would go, Houston, we have lift off. <laughs> One of those days, the whole thing went kaboom. It was a really sad sight. But there's not going to be a countdown for the rapture. No. No. There won't be time for, get ready now, get ready. And the twinkling of an eye. Yes. At the last trump. May God help us. Amen. You've got to have a purpose for coming here. You've got to have a purpose. And if that purpose is not this ultimate lift off, may God help us this morning. Amen. There'll be no time to prepare. Say they are ready in that instant. Oh, you're not. There won't be time to look at my children or my wife. There won't be time to front my pastor. Jesus is coming home. You had better be ready. I had better be ready. In Proverbs 27 verse 1, it says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Shall we read 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2? For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted. And in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. That's, That's the plain gospel truth. Now 
is the day of salvation. Amen. Now is the time to get right. Now is the time to get ready for the flight. May God help us. Amen. I've said it before, uh, and God helping me, bear with me, I'll say it again. My experience at Heathrow has been a, a very, very, very uh, exciting experience. It reminds me so often of, about the rapture of the saints. No matter who you know at Heathrow, unlike where I come from, the airport where I come from, if you know somebody, depending on how rank, high ranking they are, chances are you may hold a whole flight. It's not the same at Heathrow. Even if you know the queen, I don't think they will stop that plane. When it's time to go, it's time to go. So you need to make sure that whatever you do, you are in that plane by the time it takes off. They don't wait for anyone. When they say last boarding call, it is the last boarding call. There's not going to be another one. Oh, by the way, we said last time, but this one is for sure. Back home, where I come from, they'll even call your name. Delight. Amen. Nyon. Amen. The flight is about to take off. This is the last call. May passengers, so and so, they don't do that at Heathrow at all. When you need to go through security, it's up to you. They have already given instructions what you should do by what time. These days, technology has advanced so much that they will send you messages on your phone. Oh, by the way, you know, in such such a time tomorrow, your flight will be leaving. Please make sure that you are at the security gate by this time. Make sure you are at the boarding gate by this time. And when you are at the boarding gate, they will tell you, Passengers for this range of seats go through this gate. There's specific instructions. If you don't follow or try to be wise, you get left behind. And that's us here on earth. And we're talking about heavenly things, where God dwells. It will happen in a moment. And the twinkling of an eye. One songwriter says, what a day that will be. What a moment. May God help us. Amen. So how do we get ready? Jesus says to Joseph, you must be saved. You must be born again. We are heading to a place that Jesus has gone to prepare for his own. He's expecting those that are coming to be prepared for the place. And one way is to repent of our sin. We used to sing way back, and I believe we still do, heaven is a holy place filled with glory and with grace. Sin can never enter there. May God help us. Amen. We can still be saved today. The Bible says today, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Amen. And the blood of Jesus will never lose his power. Amen. He still saves today. Yes. If we come to him in faith believing, God knows the desire of your heart. And God will grant you that desire. Amen. So now is the only time that is guaranteed. I was thinking again when we... Uh, we had the privilege of having choir practice here preparing for camp meeting. But not everyone made it yesterday. And that day is gone. You know, that moment is gone. They can't, they can't claim it back. They can't, they can't come and have the experience that we had yesterday. May God help us. 
Our young people were writing exams, and I believe some are still writing exams. They had a moment to prepare for these exams. They had. You know, going through these lessons, some of them would, would sneak out. Some parents would think their children are going to school, and they went off elsewhere. But the time of reckoning comes, because they'll be expected to see the exam. Some of them will be in their room claiming to be studying. But they may be doing something else, you know? Maybe on social media or playing a game. By the time of reckoning then comes. Jesus was saying the same to his disciples too. As in the days of Noah, there's going to be a lot of things that will come to distract you. But be ready. We have this moment called now. Yeah. This is what we have. Yeah. It's guaranteed. Yeah. Yesterday is already a bounced check. Yeah. We can't cash it. What we can cash is this now moment. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow is a promissory note. It, will, it may not come. Like a chorus that didn't show up yesterday. Not that I have anything against them. But they should have come <laughs> anyway. We may not have another session. The time to get ready is now. Yes. It's not about how old I am. Oh. It's not about what else I need to do. We hear in the Bible of a number of very valid excuses that were given. All things are ready. Come to the feast. One said, well, you know, I have just bought a piece of land. Yeah. We live in an island. On an island. I believe the UK is an island. Land is precious. If you get a piece of land, I'm pretty sure if I did, I would want to welcome you and we thank God together. Yes. Right? This is a valid excuse. But nothing can be more important than this lift off. Amen. Nothing. The disciples said to Jesus, we have left everything. What shall become of us? And Jesus said, don't worry. My brother, let not your heart be troubled. Amen. Let's believe in God. Amen. Let's believe in Jesus. Amen. He's not a man that he should lie. He said there's going to be a lift off and it is coming. Maybe because of, you know, things that happen in life. Because he says our faith must be tried. You know? He says those days will not come unless there will be a falling away first. It's not a falling away of sinners. May God help us. Amen. May that not be our portion. Amen says, hold on fast to that which you have. May God help us. Amen. We live in those days when it says, uh, the love of many will wax cold. Our love. Our first love. Remember the day you got saved? How hungry we were. How excited we would be. How terrible we would feel when we were late for a church service. Is it still the same today? Remember the story of Jeshurun? Yeah? There's a, a, a gentleman called Jeshurun whom God blessed. And, uh, you know, he waxed. You could tell God had blessed him. And then he forgot God. May God help us? Amen. Yeah. This is the time to be ready. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, 
Have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. May God help us. Amen. I like to be called delight. And I feel privileged when somebody adds brother to it. Brother delight. What a privilege. To be called a brother. To be part of the family of God. Amen. There's no greater title than that that I desire. But we live in a day when people are doing mighty exploits. Major prophets. Men of God. Papa. May God help us. Amen. We live in a day when it's now more important to look the part than to be the part. It's one thing for me to be preaching here. It's another thing to be ready for lift off. May God help us. Amen. The Bible says many will say. Many. Not a few. Many will say to me, to Jesus, in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not done mighty exploits? I was blessed in this Sunday school today when, you know, uh, those that were here before us were, uh, you know, telling of how small and how the work began and where we are today. Oh, there's a great reward in heaven. But there is going to be a shock for some. It says, in thy name have cast out devils. So demons actually left. They laid hands on the sick and the, and the sick were healed. Amen. But that is not a qualification for lift off. No. One time Jesus sent out his disciples and, and they went into various places. And when they got back, they were so excited. And they said to Jesus, even the demons, the devils, you know, they were subject to us. And Jesus looked at them and said, you know, don't get excited over that. But rejoice that your names are written in the book of life. Yes. Well, is your name written in the book of life? You see, because the Bible says, a book shall be opened. You have to be registered there. You have to be on the flight manifesto. There are instructions when you get into a plane. Go to your seat, a seat that was allocated to you. You don't just walk in there if it's an international flight, you need to have your passport too. May God help us. Amen. Will they know you in heaven? Well, they, they have to know you now. There won't be surprises there. They are expecting us. May God help us. Prabhupada was saying, when you're registering for care meeting, you need to have done it before. Now it's just checking if your name is on the list. But you need to have done the first step to have registered. Registration is closed. Registration for heaven one day will be closed. Yes. But some people will try to sneak in and say, in thy name we did many wonderful works. Even so and so knew me. May God help us. Amen. The Bible is no way saying we shouldn't do the works. It says faith without works is dead. Let's do the first things first. There will be a shock. Psalm 44. Psalm 44. 21, verse 21. Shall not God search this out, for he knoweth the secrets of the hearts? 
You see, there's nothing we can hide from God. No. God knows us. He says, the heart of man is deceitful above all things. Who can know it? Who says, I, God, yes. try, searcheth the heart. He tries the reins. Let's take Sunday as a time for spiritual checkup. You know, whenever the, uh, I, I had to look up this phrase, lift off, uh, and, and again in Google, a vertical takeoff by an aircraft or missile. That's what they call it. A vertical takeoff by an, an aircraft or missile. So it's the upward movement from the ground uh, by either a rocket or a helicopter, a spacecraft, when it begins its flight. So before all of that happens, the pilot goes through a, a, a pre-flight checklist. There's things that they actually need to do. One of my cousins is a, is a pilot, and uh, I was asking her, so you have a lot that you do, and she says to me, yes, and one of the longest list that we have to, 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 to prepare and tick off is called a pre-flight checklist. She says it has a minimum of 30 steps that you should follow and clear off before you are cleared to take off. Well, thank God for the gospel. Amen. You don't have 30 things to do. The Bible says, be born again. And if you want to see God, the Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart. Yes. You need to be sanctified. And it goes on to say, don't be like the foolish virgins. Make sure you have the oil. You need to be baptized. You need to seek it and have it. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. You need to tarry till you're enjoyed with that power. There are some spiritual qualifications for us to make. And we can look at that checklist this morning and say, Lord, am I genuinely saved? So how do I know? The Bible says, he that is born of God doth not commit sin. John says, we know. That whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Amen. May God help us. Amen. It, we, don't, we don't hesitate to say it. Because God has done it for us. Yes. The world out there may begin to say other things. But may God help us to hold true to the principles of this gospel. Yes. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of this gospel. Yes. For it is the power of God Amen. to save. Yes. So if it is something that you feel you're a bit ashamed of, something that you can't declare publicly, let's check the pre-flight checklist. When we begin to have a shadow of a doubt, let's check. Because there won't be time to prepare. It will happen in a moment. It will be the trample sound then lift off. May God help us. Amen. Turn with me to Second Peter chapter 1, verse 10. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Amen. For if you do these things, ye shall never fail. It's like they were looking at this time that we're living in. It says, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Yeah. When investors are looking to buy an entity, and looking to buy a company, sometimes they perform what they call due diligence to make sure that what I'm going to invest in, what I'm going to pay, you know, I'm going to put money into this endeavor. It must bring return. Yeah. Is it a viable option? I'm pretty sure we do that. But when it comes to the spiritual things, the Bible says, wherefore the rather 
brethren. Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. It says many are called, but few are chosen. We need to be the called and the chosen. If you do these things, you shall never fail. Amen. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobate. It says, in this time that we live in, no one will teach the other, nor the Lord. It says, the Spirit of God bears witness with your spirit, with our spirit, that we're children of God. If they know so salvation, if there's a single doubt in my heart, I'm not ready. So the Bible says, says he's given us the spirit by which we call Abba Father. May God help us. Amen. The last thing we want to do is try to scare people into heaven. No. Heaven is a holy place. It's a beautiful place. But we're not going to find ourselves in there by chance. We're not going to get there, you know, be part of the lift off because we come to the Apostolic Faith Church. No. Examine yourself. I should examine myself. I need to be sure that I am still in the faith. There's a proving. You need to prove that. You need, I need to prove. You need to prove. Bible says, try me. That's what God says. May God help us. Amen. Know, your own, know ye not your own selves. I want to be ready because that time will be satisfying. It will be gratifying. There will be no aging, no disease. I thank God for the life that I've led. It's been a, a wonderful life. Yeah, but now I'm beginning to look like the way my father used to look. And I was wondering how it happens. But the more I look in the mirror, the more I realize I'm not a, a very young man anymore. Thank God for that. The Bible says a hoary head, uh, you know, it's a crown. It is a crown, you know, when you have gray hair. It looks like I'm getting wise these days. If the gray hairs are anything to go by. And, and I, I now have wrinkles where they never were before. You know, get into the bathroom in the morning and try to stretch my face and there it is, still remains. These bodies will edge no matter what we try to do. I try these days to run around and walk and do all kinds of things. It wastes away. But let's not be deceived. The Bible says, let no man deceive you. The Bible says, God has given some up to a reprobate mind. Because they have chosen... You know, having left the real thing, they've chosen something else for themselves. And so much that they think they are deceiving, but yet they, are, they themselves are being deceived. Preparation is an individual matter. How much you choose to believe Depends on your appetite for sin. May God help us. Amen. 
The Bible says that you should love God with all your heart, with all your mind, your whole being. It's not enough to come to church. It's not enough to have been saved a long time ago. Prove your own self. Examine yourself. May God help us. Amen. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. May God help us. Amen. To be a time of glad reunion. In the short time that I've been here, we have lost quite a few of our really beloved people. You know, they've gone on and they are asleep. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. What's going to happen at this takeoff? Here's what the Bible says. I'm going to read from verse 18. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Amen. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall, prevent, shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Shall be caught up Amen. together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Isn't that exciting? Yes, it is. That's what I live for. That's what I'm looking forward to. May God help us. Amen. This is why when, you know, they were persecuted, some of them, you know, were rich, really rich, richer than we could ever be. And yet they chose to live in tents. The Bible says they, they look for a city. They purposed in their heart that nothing on this earth is worthwhile. May God help us. Amen. Today when somebody just, you know, just knocks against you, something just comes up like, you know, you can't do that to me, you know. You, you didn't address me properly. We're concerned about things that really don't matter. We're more concerned about our stature. You know, the kind of car I drive, the kind of clothes that I do. May God help us. Amen. We come to a point where the church even uses that as a measure of being blessed by God. And yet the people that have gone on before us, say, the Bible says we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. They lost everything. Everything. They, 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 they put on camel skins. Some of them were made to, to carry their dead. Some were given to lions for the sake of their faith that one of these days Jesus promised he's coming again and he's coming to take me. The Bible says they died not having received the promise. Do we still have that kind of faith? May God help us. Amen. It will be a sad day also. Because some here in this meeting today may not be ready if Jesus were to come now. Some today, right now, may not be ready. If Jesus were to come. And that time 
You know, the opportunity to make it right, to get ready for the takeoff, will be gone. But thank God, Amen. we have an opportunity to get right. All you have to do is to come to Jesus by faith and you will save your soul. Amen. It's time to get ready for liftoff. The altars are open. May God bless you as you pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for reminding us again of our temporary nature of staying in this world. We pray that you come and descend into our spirit. Remind us those things we have to do to be, live, to be worthy of your lifting. Bless us today, O oh Lord, and make us a blessing. Let this word not go and pass us by. As we go on our knees to examine ourselves. Be with us, Lord, now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray.